In our last episode, we tackled how UHF works and what makes it so much more powerful than 2.4 gigahertz. But that's only half of the conversation. You bought your shiny new kit, you show up on the day, but now what? Today we teach you how to use UHF digital wireless on a professional film set. Today's shoot is a film noir in an old Hollywood house. You've received your morning sides from the AD, you know how many people are on camera, and how many wires need to be set up. There are two actors, and the location is tight. This means we'll need two lobs, and our sound mixer will have to set up in the next room over and record through the concrete wall. Now that we understand the situation, we can talk about the first step of using UHF, scanning. Our guest Ben is here to explain. Hey guys, what's up? At the top of the day, we conduct a scan of all the nearby frequencies to find the cleanest ones for our devices to use. We've been told we need two transmitters, so that's at least two clean frequencies. You can use a dedicated RF scanner or one included in your wireless system. If you're using the Deity Theos, you can conduct a scan right from the D2RX receiver, which means one less piece of gear you need. Before you get the set, you should familiarize yourself with the local laws and regulations for UHF transmission, as they differ greatly from place to place then conduct your scan accordingly. Let's look at this scan of our set. Ideally, our devices should use the frequencies here where the RF noise is lowest. Take note of those frequencies and then enter them into your transmitter or receiver. If you're using Theos, as long as your transmitters have been paired to your receiver, your system will automatically select them for you after you scan. If you have to manually select frequencies, you'd need to be mindful of the proper spacing between them. Make sure your transmitters are all at least 700 kilohertz apart. They need to be at least as far apart to avoid intermod or self-generated interference. Again, if you use the built-in scanner in the Citus Audio app, it will find and assign these spaced out frequencies for you and assign them to your devices automatically. Say the frequency block you chose isn't available. You could, of course, just ball up and cry because your job is over. Or you could look at uh, what's available in the other frequency blocks around you. The cool thing about DD Theos is that it gives you all the frequency blocks available. So if one's being a problem, we just switch to another one and see what's available over there. Once you've found the right frequencies, it's time to lob up your talent and hide the transmitters. Much like everything in the sound world, it's not always as straightforward as it seems. Ben has some important details for you. You can hide UHF transmitters anywhere on talent generally. You just need to be mindful of one major thing, what material and how much of it is between the transmitter and the receiver. UHF radio waves are tremendously robust and can punch through most materials, though it's best to try and avoid that as much as possible. It's best for you to mount the transmitter on a part of the body with the least amount of mass on them, like an ankle versus like a waistband. And even more ideally, in a position that's directly facing your receiver. We often use the term line of sight or LOS to refer to this. The reason line of sight is so important with UHF is because the less distance that it has to travel and the less materials it has to travel through, the better reception you're going to have at your cart and the better signal you're going to get in your recording. Ankle straps or other specialized mounts can be your best friend in achieving this. Make sure to have a fully stocked expendables kit before you head to set. Another thing to be mindful of is the material in the walls of your set. There could be problematic piping, wiring, rebar, any number of dense things. Try to work around these if you can. Say we're in a situation where we're in a tight space, we just can't fit in the same room as cameras and talent. A solution that we do is we'll go set up our cart at a different room and where we're shooting, we'll set up a remote antenna. That way we can be out of the way, but still receiving that wireless transmission in the room cleanly. So in our setup, I need to receive the signal from these two actors through this concrete wall full of piping. Using an extended coax cable, I rigged up an antenna on the inside of this room. This way, I don't actually have to transmit through the wall to get a good recording. The transmission takes place all in the same room, and then the signal gets to me via hardwire. Much more reliable. You'll see a lot of sound mixers using remote antennas in stadiums, concert halls, or other metal structures to help combat material problems. If you're on set and you're forced to transmit through a conductive material for whatever reason, you can still increase the RF power to strengthen the punch of your signal and hopefully get through these problematic materials. Remember to refer to local RF laws to see just how much you can increase that RF power. We touched on antennas a little bit already, but there are a couple more key things to know to properly use them. Firstly, there's different kinds of antennas, but for filmmaking, there are only three you really need to be aware of. Whips, shark fins, and dipoles. Ben is gonna go more in depth. 
WIPs are the most common antennas you'll find. It's a simple wire that captures a very narrow amount of frequencies at a limited range. The length of the antenna dictates which frequencies it can send and receive. Though they only capture a small window of frequencies, you can cut them to the exact length you need to keep them cost-effective and versatile. If you need to transmit across long distances or have to place a remote antenna for reasons we discussed earlier, you'll need to use an external antenna. On a film set, you'll often come across two types of external antennas. The shark fin antenna is a directional antenna used for picking up signals really far away. It can also be used to avoid picking up interfering signals coming from the sides of the antenna. A dipole antenna and its variant, a butterfly antenna, are omnidirectional, and they're great for when transmitters are moving everywhere on set. Of these three antennas, a shark fin and a butterfly antenna are the ones that are gonna pick up an ultra wide band of frequencies, whereas a dipole is much more narrow. Lastly, if you need to distribute an external antenna to multiple receivers, you should add an RF antenna distro to your kit. So what is an antenna distro? It's a device that goes in our kit that lets us use fewer antennas to collectively absorb all of our frequencies and distribute it to all of the receivers in our kit without having to set up an antenna for every single device that we have. Bottom line is, if you're gonna be shooting professionally, make sure you bring antennas, straps, and have an understanding of where you're going to be shooting. Do your homework. This was a really technical episode, but hopefully now you feel a little bit more confident using UHF on set. Let us know in the comments below, what are some of your best practices for using UHF? Until next time, subscribe and happy shooting.